and I just want to kick it off and start what really attracted, I'll start with you, Mr. Catlett, uh, what attracted you to this particular project? I felt like it was something that I can uh, pour my, my, my spirit into and my soul into. You know, the words jumped off the page. You know, I enjoyed what AV, um, incredible director, writer was, was trying to say, you know, and I, some things you read and you're like, yeah, this is meant for me. And, you know, I'm glad it came around where I was able to really put it up on his feet, you know? So that's what really uh, attracted me to the role. You know, it, uh, it connected with me deeply. And um, Mr. Cross, what was it about reading a script that really um, excited you about this project? Um, I, lo I love that you used the word excite because I definitely was excited um, at this point in my career to, to do something that was uh, different um, than anything or any roles that I had done at the time. Um, a challenge, a challenge to, to, you know, sink myself in material that was personal because the story was definitely uh, personal to me. Um, that this, you know, brave, brilliant black woman was, you know, able to put into words, you know, experience and story that is so specific to a lot of us um, black boys in America. Um, and that's truly where the excitement came because the challenge as an actor was that, okay, I'd rather tell this story before anyone else does. So mm -hmm. that, that is mm -hmm. where my, a lot of my excitement came from. Uh, that's awesome. awesome. And when you read the script, um, what was your initial thoughts on kind of that mother son relationship dynamic? Did you repeat the question? I said, um, when you first read the script, what was your initial thoughts um, on the mother and son relationship, that mother-son dynamic? Mm -hmm. um, on, on, on first read, um, you know, immediately, you know, blown away by the, the authenticity in the relationship. You know, a lot of time, uh, narrative prose, you know, writers, what they do is that they'll try to assume the the intellectual understanding of the reader um, by diluting, um, you know, a fact or, or or a truth that exists. And um, <coughs> Av did a great job in uh, not, you know, assuming that the audience, you know, was dumb or didn't understand or was or was too too weak to understand this truth that exists. Uh, in America specifically, and with the dynamic between Terry and Inez, um, there was this kindred, almost friendship, this brother and sister, you know, like relationship between them, you know, that made uh, their relationship uh, so so beautiful, but at the same time so complex, complex in that, you know, yes, Terry is a child, but in a lot of ways, Inez is a child at the same time. Um, and I think that they, you know, Terry and Inez connect in that way a lot. Um, you know, just as much as Terry is figuring, figuring out his haphazard life and what it is and why it is, Inez is doing the same thing at the same exact time. And we see a lot of that, you know, um, of, you know, they always say children raising children, but, you know, you kind of get this example of them kind of growing together and kind of figuring things out. Um, in that particular space. So I, I definitely, uh, I'm, I'm excited to kind of see the conversations that kind of surround what that looks like. Cause I think a lot of people can, you know, we see examples of it in real life. And I think it's a very, I think it's a very active conversation um, that is being had and that can be had um, because, you know, this is the first time we've seen, you know, a story like this on screen. And the fact that we're seeing it for the first time in the social engagement era where our parents, our grandparents, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're on Twitter. Um, so we can have a more active conversation as opposed to let's say a movie like this uh, was released in 1996, you know what I'm saying? The conversation is gonna take years to be had where we can have this conversation literally the night the movie's released and you know so on and so forth. Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Catledge, so for um, 
your perspective, why do you think um, or how important do you think fatherhood is in this movement? Say that one more time. You broke up at the last part. Sorry. Um, uh, how important is fatherhood in this movie? It's very important. You know, um, there's a lot of people who are, have um, two parents in a the household. There's a lot of people who don't. You know, some of my biggest lessons I've learned, even though I have an amazing father, wasn't from my dad. You know, it was either from a person playing a dad in a film. You know, I grew up watching Family Matters. There's so many lessons that I've learned from Family Matters. There's so many lessons I've learned from Good Times, you know, and all those different, um, you know, sitcoms that were, that I came up on. And you need that that source and that anchor, you know, to be able to, you know, to find yourself in that. And in the film, Lucky is that anchor. You know, he's giving gems, he's giving lessons. He's saying, hey, do this, do that. Don't do this, don't do that. And the truth of the matter is we live in a time now that people are so scared to tell you, don't go left, go right. You know, uh, everybody thinks that they're their own man or their own person, and we don't listen to the elders like we used to. And so part of uh, that fatherhood is having that elderly advice. Was there any preparation um, that you kind of took externally uh, to kind of prepare for this role? Say that part again, because you broke up again. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I said, was there any um, preparation on your and externally to prepare for this role? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, I had a brother named G-Dot that they put me on to uh, in Harlem, from Harlem, you know, was able to give me that Harlem bounce. You know, I looked at a lot of the hood blogs, you know, that was coming out of Harlem, you know, trying to, uh, you know, adapt, you know, the accent, getting a dialect coach, you know, talking to my boy, Eamon Joseph from Snowfall. He from Harlem you know, speaking to him and saying, hey, man, you know, I need a little help on this, 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 that, and the third. You know, he gave me some pointers on the behavior and things like that. And, you know, to actors that would sit back and watch this, you know, you can't be so prideful that you can't ask for help. You know, you got to be able to call people who are from that area to say, hey, I'm from D.C. I'm not from, you know, Harlem. I'm never going to be from Harlem. But what are some things that I can do that can and give Lucky what he needs, you know? So I was pulling different textures from G-Dot, from A.V., from Eamon, from uh, the city of Harlem, and then I was blending them all together. And yeah, it was, uh, it, it was a lot of work, but it was rewarding work. Mr. Cross, why um, or what preparation did you have for this role? Um, I feel like um, <clears throat> a lot of my preparation um, Stem, stemmed from an eagerness to to to, to work. You know, I, I love the work. I love, um, you know, one of my greatest influences uh, in Denzel Washington. You know, you know, he reminds me. He always says, um, "Like, don't take yourself too serious." You know, we here we here to like serve a purpose, but you know, we plan make believe at the same time. And I feel like just as close as this story is to, to, to my heart and my actual personal life. You know, I love, I love to getting the chance to do the research. I love, I love the, the maniacal detailed scientific work um, th that an actor, you know, has to do. And, you know, some actors don't do the work, you know, and, you know, kudos to their process. But for me, a lot of the work um, lies in the research. Um, going to these communities. I got a lot of family in Harlem I'm sitting down with my family. Um, you know, I love the golden era of hip hop, you know, for me, which was the 90s. You know, so I love the diplom the diplomats. I love Cameron. I love Duels. Yeah. Um, I love Mace, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of what Will was speaking to, you know, in a previous <clears throat> interview we had, um, was that a lot of Lucky's character for him was in the music. And that's for me where, you know, I kind of got a lot of my linchpins from was like that music, you know, Diddy, like, like what, what is the sound of Harlem? You know what I mean? And how do you, how do you weave that into a person and to making them a person? Um, and uh, again, just, you know, AV's brilliance in her articulating her vision to me, 
um, and then me um, receiving it and then developing, you know, a commitment to, 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 to bringing her story to life was where a lot of my preparation uh, was rooted. So we talk about New York, we talk about Harlem. Why do you think that city was so, or borough, was so um, important to kind of help move this story? And I guess I'll go back to you, um, Cross, and then, sorry. I said, um, why we speak about Harlem, um, why do you think that borough, why do you think New York City was so um, important for this story and how it added so much to the to the story? And we'll go with you, Cross, and then I would love um, the Catholic for you to speak on it as well. Um, I feel like uh, with AV and, you know, you know, I don't want to speak for her, but, you know, AV, you know, you know, she's from Queens, you know, she's not specifically from Harlem. Um, but knowing people in New York, knowing people from the different boroughs, I feel like that, you know, she understood that, that, you know, maybe the best way to tell the story, uh, was from the Harlem perspective, you know, um, you know, and, and, and that's like a question for her, but Tiana herself is from Harlem. So at the, at, at the point of origin, once we get to, okay, well, the story is going to be in Harlem. We got to find the best the the best uh, person fit to tell that story, and um, again, like Will has been saying, like the, I don't care who auditioned for that role, like Tiana was born to play it, um, and I think that Tiana herself um, was the physical uh, manifestation of showing Harlem as a character itself. You know, Harlem itself plays a character, and I feel like you you would have had to gotten someone who could juxtapose themselves with the with the borough itself um and then the the thematic tones of you know gentrification uh being at play the foster care system being at play and how you know harlem being a borough in in new york city how how its role played you know in in the manifestation of those things that plague the city itself as a whole Do you want to add anything? I think you asking me uh, yes. the same thing. Would I mean, you like to add anything? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd like to add it. Okay. Uh, no, I think Josiah said it all. You know, one thing about Harlem, you know, we can't forget about the Harlem Renaissance, you know, and so the great art that came out of Harlem. And I think it's a perfect backdrop, you know, to be a backdrop for New York City and for the rest of the world that will be viewing an inside view of Harlem. You know, there's so many history, so much history there. You know, uh, from the street corners to the to the signs. You know, it's everything is just there. And um, when Josiah was also saying, and what we both were saying about Tiana being from Harlem, it also Inez had to be a real mom, and Tiana's a real mom. It couldn't be an actress that hadn't had children. You know, you had to be from Harlem. And you had to be a mom because there's things that she's doing and communicating in her performance that only a mom can do, you know, only a father can do, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's the that, uh, second what my brother was saying. Awesome. So what did you both learn about either learn or surprise about the foster care system um, after filming? Um, and we'll start with you again, Mr. Khaled, if you heard that. I think you said something about the foster care system. Was I surprised about it? Yeah, did you learn anything or were you surprised about anything after um, filming about the foster care system? Yeah, well, I was surprised that I was like, man, wow, well, back in the day, but it, it made sense, you know, even my, you know, I'm 40. So, you know, I remember like, you know, you go into the library, I don't know if they do it now, but you had to look on those index cards, you know, to find books or to look up things. But to have kids on index cards in no true system you know, you already know that that system was broken. And I shared this in an interview uh, on a radio station, um, you know, how I identify with that and how that part touched me is that, you know, uh, my sister, my sister that that is no longer alive, you know, but she has four kids and, you know, she got caught up in the crack, you know, the crack era. And, you know, a lot of her kids were getting ready to experience that foster care system if it hadn't have been for her dad to take, you know, one and my dad and my mom to take one, you know, so I can see how a kid can get lost in that system, you know, 
And so to see that and to learn about that and how AV put that in the story, it was just, it, it, you know, we need to think about those kids, not just watch the story and say the movie, oh, it was beautiful. No, there's kids right now that are suffering in that system and we need to do everything in our power to make sure the system is doing the best thing for those kids. And you, Mr. Cross, any things, anything that you learned about the foster care system? Um, again, to piggyback in a second of uh, what Will was saying, um, it, 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 it didn't take me reading the script to know that the foster care system was broken. I myself haven't experienced it personally, um, but through indirect, indirect um relations obviously i have family members friends um you know who have had experiences and life experiences with the foster care system and it's it's, it's one of those things where i i i try in my power to refrain from commentary around it you know i'm of the mind where there needs to be just an active an active like plan of action to to to, to mend it you know where where for me when i was you know when i was coming up you know people think that the hood is so one dimensional and that we're all thieves and robbers and no there's good people good normal people that just exist in the hood too you know what i mean so you know some of my closest friends were just you know running the street products of the foster care system they felt they 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 felt more safe and more protected in the gangs and where i came from than in a foster care home you know, mm -hmm. so they would escape the foster care home, you know, and join, you know, the East Side Felons or whatever, you know, and, you know, though it's so nuanced and, you know, you know, we preach, you know, you know, getting kids out of the street um, and how this movie presents it in a beautiful way, like, they, they don't have a home to go to, you know, so in, in anyone, they want to remain or you know, find themselves in a in a place of homeostasis where where they're comfortable, where they feel protected, um, and you can't blame these kids for some of the choices that they're making because they're a product of the system that's broken itself. Um, so, like like Will said, I feel like um, there are kids right now today, March twenty third, two thousand and twenty three, that are going through this, and we need to more so shift the conversation to like a plan of action. So what are your thoughts about second chances? Um, unfortunately, it kind of seems like black people don't get, not too often get the chance at second chances um, to redeem themselves or to do better or to, you know, fail and, um, you know, make up for that. What do you say to that? Well, to that, I would just, I would just agree wholeheartedly with what you said. I don't think there's any, uh, I don't even think that there's any like discussion around that being like a fact you know, that is a fact. Um, and I feel that I'm, I'm of the mind frame of doing everything in my own personal power to change my circumstances. Um, so I feel like the more we can do that as individuals, it opens up the landscape for, you know, society or systematic structures to look at oh, we, we threw them, you know, in the fire and then they made it out on their own. Um, and obviously everyone's not, not going to be able to do that. Um, but for me, even when it comes to acting, you know, I'm of the mind, you know, get it right on the first take and you ain't got to do a second take, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but I do feel that there, there needs to be a more forgiving and a more empathetic, um, perspective and embrace around um if you're going to say that america is the land of a second chance then you know stand on it and don't just provide it for a certain select group of people Would you like to add anything i mean wow you know that's uh <laughs> that's pretty heavy I, I i definitely agree with josiah on that um you know we're growing and we're evolving as as people you know so uh, a second chance shouldn't be a thought. It should be a given, you know, not, we're not showing what capacity it should be, you know, distributed out, you know, depending on what the, the situation may be, but humans will make mistakes. We're going to make mistakes, you know, and 
a lot of times we got to give that second chance to ourselves. It's not just always someone else or a government agency or whatever it may be. A lot of times we don't give ourselves the second chance. We failed once and we won't do it. We won't do it again. Or we failed at marriage. We won't go again. Or this relationship didn't work out. No, a second chance is your right. You know, life is about moving forward. Life is about being the best that you can be and the legacy that you leave in the hearts of people. So that should be a given. Do you have, or not do you, what advice do you give to men who are kind of in the same relationship that you and, um, or your character and Inez uh, were in? Be there, you know? That kid is, may not have come from you, but that's your kid. If you love that woman, <laughs> I'll say it like this. It's a teaching moment, but I'll say it like this. True love is I love the things that you love. You know, that's, that's true love. You love that child. If I love you, I love that child, you know? And for people who are in that situation right now, you know, it's so much beauty that will come out of your yes to just love that child and what you're gonna do for that child and the kids that will come from that child versus you being in a place of resistance because it's not your child, you know? You can't say, I want you lucky and you don't want what she has. You may not agree with how it happened, but if I want you, then I want all of you, not half of you, I want the whole you. And that's what you come with, you know? It's a bar, it's a bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a decision, love Stop is a decision. Life. <laughs> yeah, that was a decision. Awesome. Um, so you all just came off of the Sundance Grand Jury Prize win. Congratulations. Um, does that to each of you, what does that mean to you? Uh, does that mean anything to you um, as an actor or as someone um, who is who works hard on telling our particular stories? Uh, I'll go ahead, I'll start with Mr. Cross first and then we'll go and come back to you. Mm -hmm. um, myself, um, you know, like Will, um, we're men of faith. Um, and for me, the, co the, the only confirmation, you know, that I needed was from up above first. So that was the first, you know, thing that confirmed, you know, the work that we put into this, um, you know, and, and, and respectfully speaking, you know, you know, it's, it's amazing that these things have happened and people have resonated, um, to the, to the work we've done, but the confirmation first came from God. Um, and then once we, you know, got to Sundance, it was like kind of like a reconfirming of what we already, you know, got confirmed, you know? Um, and, and that's where, you know, you kind of, you, you know, you want to be silent and let your work speak for itself. And I feel like, you know, going to Sundance at, at that point and, you know, Sundance has been his, historic for this and all film festivals alike, you know, once you're in, once you're in that arena with those other films, you know, you competing, you know, so you don't, you don't got any bells and whistles to, you know, hold on or lean on to, even if you do got distribution from a studio or, or this or that, or your agency this or your agency that, it's like, what story is going to touch somebody's soul at that point, yeah. you know, so for, for me being there and existing in, 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 in those spaces, in those rooms, in those theaters, with people, people coming from all walks of life. It wasn't just black people in there. And that's important, you know, and I feel like AV did such a brilliant job where she's telling such a specific story, but it's universal. Yeah. I think, I think that's the thing that kind of like, really like, you know, honed in for me, like, oh, it ain't just black people that's like feeling this, everybody feeling this, you know? So um, I think that was kind of like, one of my biggest takeaways from the Sundance experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree too. I, um, I think it's an opportunity to change the conversation. And what I mean by that, we talk about diversity all the time. You always hear that as an African-American artist, right? I don't even consider myself an African-American artist. I consider myself an artist that happens to be in this skin, you know, uh, which I love. But when we have, oh, our people, um, our black story, when we have those things, it creates division. We just wanna be seen as 
this is just great art, you know, take from it what you need to take from it. And at Sundance recognized that art. They didn't say, okay, we have a black woman director, we have a black woman lead. No, the film itself is universal because it's people. People are universal. There's black people all over the world, white people all over the world, Asian people all over the world, you know? So I think, you know, we can start to have a broader conversation about just human existence and what it's like to, to just be able to do any role that you want. You know, I want to get to the point where Josiah can play any role that he wants to play, you know, because he connected to it. It may not have been written for him, but he connected to it. And I think that's, you know, the overall conversation. And I applaud Sundance, you know, for honoring our film and giving us, the, you know, the highest prize and getting more eyeballs on the film. And, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, this film go around and people come out and people talk about it and, all the things that will take place.